in person for the first time in two years, I think it is, right, Andy? It's a little over two years. And welcome everyone to our beautiful new building. And uh, it's really great to, to be here in person with not only the board, but everyone else uh, uh, joining us here this morning. Um, so welcome to the board activities of June 23rd, 2022. And before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to remember and honor a longtime uh, board office employee, Stephanie Anderson, uh, who passed away unexpectedly last week. Stephanie has been with Metro uh, and in the board secretary's office as an executive administrative assistant for over nine years. In addition to her critical administrative duties, Stephanie was responsible for constituent services customer correspondence, onboarding and offboarding board members, and setting up board orientations. She also provided internal customer service to colleagues on behalf of the board secretary's office. Stephanie often volunteered to serve as a Metro Information Person, or MIP, to assist customers during service outages. Stephanie was an extremely hard worker, and we will all miss her kindness, generosity, positivity, and her uh, she had a very strong uh, can-do spirit, as uh, anyone who had an interaction with Stephanie knows. Uh, so on behalf of the board, we extend our deepest sympathies to her family and colleagues. And now if we just take a moment of silence uh, to remember Stephanie. Thank you. Uh, now we'll ask our Chief Safety Officer, Teresa Emposado, to provide us with this morning's safety contact. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm pleased to welcome everyone to Metro's new headquarters building at LaFont Plaza. As part of our return to in-person meetings, our safety contacts will include relevant instructions to ensure safety in the event of an emergency in the facility. The new headquarters building is equipped with the latest safety systems. In the event of an alarm sounding, please proceed to exit the room through the nearest exit and gather outside. Should we need to evacuate further, our assembly point will be the adjacent Hancock Park. The nearest AED is located at the entryway desk and I will fetch the AED in case of a medical emergency and our security forces will coordinate with first responders. Restrooms are located in the main vestibule on your left. Medical emergencies do occur throughout the Metro system. And here are a few tips if you, or if you see a fellow passenger experience medical distress. Call 911 or send a text message to Metro Transit Police. QR codes on Metro posters allow you to text my MTPD directly. When using Metro Rail, immediately notify the station manager. Call boxes are mounted on pylons on station platforms to enable passengers to report emergencies to the station manager. Closed circuit video cameras cover every corner of the station and monitors are in the station manager's kiosk. All metro stations are equipped with automated external defibrillators and call boxes on each rail car enable any rider to report an emergency to the train operator who is in constant radio communication with central control. When using a metro bus, if a medical emergency is experienced, immediately notify the metro bus operator. All buses are also equipped with automated external defibrillator devices. For any additional information on how to handle emergencies, see the rider guide at WMATA.com. That concludes our safety contact. Thank you, Ms. Emposado. Since this is our first public meeting of the day, I'll ask the Board Corporate Secretary to call the roll. Ms. Ellis. Thank you. Chair Smedburn? Present. Vice Chair Babers? Present. Alternate Director Zappi? Present. Director Klein? Present. Director Letourneau? Present. Director Lowe? Present. Director Drummer? Present. Alternate Director Helfer. Present. Mr. Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, first order of business today is to approve the agenda. If there are no objections, we'll consider the agenda approved as presented. Does anyone have any objections to the uh, agenda by any of the committee members? No. Okay. Hearing none, the agenda is approved. Now we'll move on to the approval of the minutes. We have minutes of our uh, May 26th meeting and the executive session before us for approval. Are there any objections or comments or revisions to those minutes as presented? Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll consider the minutes approved as presented. Our action item this morning is acceptance of an IG report. We have one item on our agenda this morning to accept the report from the Inspector General. Under the board's bylaws, the executive committee is responsible for reviewing 
and accepting the reports of the Inspector General. The committee has reviewed the following report, Audit of WMATA's Health and Welfare and Plan Management. Before we take a vote, uh, we'll ask the Acting IG, uh, Renee Fables, uh, to provide the committee with highlights of this report. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. It's nice to see you all in person. Um, I'm pleased to present OIG's audit of WMATA's Health and Welfare Plan Management. As you know, the Health and Welfare Plan covers medical care for participants and their dependents. OIG's audit found that managing of the plans by the trustees could be strengthened by improving the governance of the local 689 Health and Welfare Plan so that accurate contributions can be made to the local 689 and 922 Health and Welfare Plans. These conditions occurred because the plan trustees did not establish a governance program so that there could be uh, proper controls uh, in place so that the contributions can be made. Without appropriate management, the health and welfare plan, uh, of the health and welfare plans, WMATA cannot ensure optimal plan performance with in, which impacts both WMATA and the plan beneficiary, beneficiaries. <laughs> In addition, OIG found uh, plan contribution payments totaling $4 million uh, uh, that we questioned and found that one of the plan's health and welfare accounting records had inaccurately identified employee direct payment contributions of $27 million that were not made. WMATA agreed with all nine recommendations and we will continue to work with them to ensure that they these uh, recommendations get Im implemented. I want to thank WMATA management and staff for their cooperation during this audit. That concludes my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Fabus. Um, are there any questions uh, from board members? Okay. Hearing none, uh, acceptance of this report constitutes the board's authorization to post it on the WMATA website provided that the Inspector General has conferred with the General Counsel and confirmed that any private or confidential information has been removed and or redacted in accordance with the applicable law and WMATA policy. I would like to move approval of this item. Is there a second from a committee member? Second. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Babers. Uh, any final comments or questions? Hearing none, Ms. Ellison, please call the roll. Chair Smedberg. Aye. Vice Chair Babers. Aye. Alternate Director Zappi? Aye. And Ms. Klein? Aye. Mr. Chair, the motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. The report has been uh, accepted and the Inspector General has been authorized to post it online. Since there's no further business to come before the committee, we'll stand adjourned and we'll move to the Elections Committee meeting. Uh, then I'll turn it over to Mr. Letourneau. Thank you and good morning. This is a meeting of the Elections Committee of the Metro Board of Directors. I'm Matt Letourneau, the Elections Committee Chairman. I'd also like to note that I'm joined by the other three members of the Elections Committee, Dr. Lowe, Mr. Drummer, and Dr. Helfer, who is participating for Ms. Martin Proctor, who could not join us today. I'd like to start our meeting by asking for the committee's approval of the agenda and the minutes. Does anyone have any suggested changes to the agenda? If there are no objections, I'll consider the agenda accepted as presented. Now we have the minutes from our last public meeting in June 2021 and the committee's executive session on June 9th of this year for approval. Unless there are any objections to the minutes as presented, we'll consider them approved. Are there any objections? Hearing none, we'll consider the minutes approved. Now for our FY 2023 board officer elections, we only have one item on our agenda, which is to nominate our board officers for the coming year, fiscal year 2023, which starts July 1. Uh, the board aligns our officers terms with Metro's fiscal year from July 1 to June 30th. So the officers who are nominated at this meeting and elected at the board meeting will begin their terms at the end of today's board meeting. I move the following individuals to serve as the board's officers for FY 2023. For chair, Paul Smedberg. For first vice chair, Lucinda Babers. And for second vice chair, Jim Ports Jr. Could I get a second from a committee member? Second. Seconded by Dr. Lowe. Any further discussion? Uh, just will say on behalf of the Elections Committee, uh, thank you to our officers who have guided us through the past year. Uh, we appreciate all the effort that you've put into this, um, a lot of extra effort, especially you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so we look forward to continuing to work with you. I will ask Ms. Ellison to conduct a roll call vote. Thank you. Chair Letourneau? Aye. Dr. Lowe? Aye. 
Mr. Drummer? Aye. Dr. Helfer? Aye. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The motion passes. Okay, with no further business to come before the committee, we stand adjourned. The board meeting will begin shortly. All right, good morning, everyone. Again, I'm Paul Smedberg, uh, Chair of the WMATA Board. Uh, thank you for being here today to our first in-person meeting of the Board of Directors since the start of the pandemic. But before we begin, uh, Ms. Ellison, do we need to call the roll? No. no. Okay, so we're good, all right. Uh, next, we'll move on to the approval of the agenda. If there are no objections, I'd like to consider the agenda approved as presented. Does anyone have any recommended changes or additions to the agenda? Hearing none, the agenda is approved. We have three sets of minutes for approval uh, today's meeting. The board meeting of May 26th and the executive sessions of May 26th and June 9th of 2022. I'd like to consider these minutes approved as presented. Does anyone have any objections or changes, comments on the minutes? Hearing none, we'll consider the minutes approved as presented. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to uh, public comment and reports by advi our advisory boards. First, we'll hear from our customers and stakeholders. I'll ask staff to play the comments submitted. Um, Mr. Pasek. Those were pre-recorded, so we're gonna let those roll. Good morning, Mr. Chair. We're having technical difficulties with the pre-recording, so I'm just going to read them off. First set of comments are from Joe McAndrew from Metro Now Coalition. The Metro Now Coalition is committed to better transit in the greater Washington region. The past few months have demonstrated that WMATA has not improved key functions related to transparency, accountability, and safety that must be overcome to provide a safe, reliable, and efficient transit service our region deserves. We thank the board for your service and prioritizing safety However, the coalition has questioned about WMATA's ability to serve as the backbone of the region's transit system that have yet to be answered. Questions are as followed. How is the board encouraging interim CEO Andy Off to conduct top to bottom review of operations and management at WMATA in order to identify and adopt sweeping changes to correct for factors that are impending the development of a comprehensive culture of safety? How many 6,000 series Metro rail cars are now in service? How many still remain out of service. For cars out of service, what is the timeline for they return to service? Next slide. With the restoration of, seven, of several 7,000 series rail cars in June, what is the expected time frame for returning to full fleet service and how will the board report on progress or delays? When will the board hold a public session on projected impacts and options to address the fiscal cliff for operating ex expenses expected next budget cycle. What strategic planning efforts are underway to identify a new sustainable revenue source for WMATA's long-term operations? What is the status of regional bus network redesign project? We look forward to your responses. And if we can skip to the last slide. This is pre-recorded. See if that one works. That comment from previous uh, commenter will be posted online. Uh, the last set of comments we have are Linda Loomis uh, from the District of Columbia. I have been a WMATA traveler for years. In the past year in particular, I have seen many people enter a metro station or a bus without paying. On Wednesday afternoon at Gallery, Plus, Gallery Place Metro Station, a young man stepped over the fence, the fair gate, turned around, and made sure we saw him, and then he did a little dance mocking those who pay. 
The people who evade paying fares are not held accountable. They take away from those of us who always pay and respect our fellow travelers. WMATA doesn't seem to care about us. There is so much mayhem on public transit these days, pot smokers, drug addicts shooting up, harassment, physical violence. After sending many text messages to Metro's Let Us Know line and calls to your Metro Police about these problems, nothing is done. It seems no one cares to do anything to make things safe or fiscally responsible. Linda Newmans. We do have one in person. Good morning, Denise. Good morning, my name is Denise Rush. I am on the AAC committee, vice chair, vice chair of the Metro Access Subcommittee. Today I'm not representing either. I'm speaking as a public person. Since it's the first in-person meeting, I wanna say thank you to all the people who have tried to make the system work. I started with the system all my life, from bus, rail, to metro access. We never take the time to thank everyone who tries to make the system work. We have to get together and work together. I started when they had seven in-ground in metro. I did the um, mock-up of the lighting. Then I went to the rail. Then I went blind and I went to Metro Access. I have been through all phases of the whole system and we've come a long way. Yes, we have to come further. We have to go further and look forward, but we should be grateful and thankful for what we have gone through thus far and they certainly have worked with me. The 55 years that I have worked in the District of Columbia, they have made sure I got to work, whether it was bus, rail, or metro access. And I personally wanna thank you. No, it hasn't been perfect, and it's just like a marriage. It's not gonna be perfect, but if we work together and we want to work together to to improve, we will improve. So I'm going to say that we will improve. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Uh, nice seeing you again. I think the last time we saw you, Dr. Lowe and I saw you at the uh, budget hearing at the old headquarters building. So thank you for those words. And thank you to everyone who submitted comments. Uh, next we'll hear from the Accessibility Advisory Committee. Uh, Mr. Posner wasn't able to be with us here today, but Patrick, uh, I see you're here. Do I have a mic? Thank you. Oh, good. Yeah, Thank it's you a little very different, much. Patrick. It's a little uh, stick. Yes, thing. that's fine. Good. This is a, a very comfortable, actually. I'd like to follow up on what Denise just said. Uh, thank you for the work that you've done working particularly with the AAC committee. But I also want to direct uh, some remarks to Denise. When it comes to people who help to make the system better, she's one of the best. We're very happy that she is working with the AAC and for all the work that she has done over the years. She really does minimize her contribution to the disability community and the work that she does and the thanks, the thank you that she gives. Uh, she, doesn't, um, uh, she doesn't let Mr. Blake off easily in the meeting, she is quite the advocate, but once again, it's nice to get the thank yous too. So Denise, for everything that you have done over many years and the contributions you've made to the disability community, thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, Phil asked me to make a couple of points on his behalf today um, and the AAC. Uh, first of all, I understand that you'll be looking and, and hopefully approving the members to the uh, new members to the AAC. We appreciate that. We are looking forward to another very good year, and we understand that there will be a lot of discussions with respect to the budget going on. Um, so that has been uh, something that if we're at full strength, we can give a better product to you. We also understand that new leaders, leadership is coming on board. 
Uh, we look forward to the direction from the board, from the staff, and the new leadership to help define what we're going to do in the next year. Uh, over the last month, we met with the interim uh, uh, chief operating officer and the interim general manager. We talked about issues that were important to the AAC, including a flat fare for Metro Access, which you have, the board has heard uh, from us many times. We will continue to advocate for that over the next year. We think it uh, makes good business, business sense. We also uh, have been engaged with a product project uh, with Waymaps, which will, will um, uh, ensure internal GPS to the, um, uh, to the subway stations and outside the subway stations, particularly for people who are blind, to be able to navigate and have uh, exact uh, directions inside the station with a GPS system that is as accurate as outside. Uh, the, uh, we've been through an initial uh, pilot uh, um, rollout. We know that there's going to be a soft launch in September. I have talked with members of the disability community, particularly the blind community in uh, D.C., Virginia, and Maryland, and so you're going to have a lot of participation from that disabled community in a project that is going to make WMATA, the metro system, more accessible. So we look forward to that. We, are, we really do appreciate, as has happened many times uh, in the past, that we get invited to um, uh, give our input at the beginning of the phase of a, a, uh, of a project. Uh, we've seen that over and over and over again, uh, whether it's uh, the websites that we're looking at, improving those, the fare gates that have been brought on board that we've taken a look at, the 8,000 series uh, rail cars where we uh, uh, gave some improvements and have continuous discussions on that. <clears throat> and the other, another area of, um, uh, you know, that we've worked on with WMATA and DC, Maryland and Virginia in the area of floating bus stops. What are they? How can we make those accessible? Can we do something regionally throughout the area that we can showcase to the rest of the country that this is how you do this correctly? So there's a lot of positive things going on. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do in front of us. We appreciate your leadership. We also appreciate the leadership of, uh, of uh, Mr. Blake and his staff uh, working with us to give you guys the best product we can give. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sheehan. Thank you, Mr. Sheehan. Uh, is any questions or comments for Mr. Sheehan? OK. Next. Uh, We'll hear from the, the RAC. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Mayor uh, is not able to be with us here this morning after last minute uh, conflict. Uh, so the RAC has submitted its written report, and that is available online on your uh, vehicle or on your mobile uh, iPad. Paul, uh, uh, yeah. May I just make one comment about this? I just want to um, just note that we have a number of new RAC members, and we're Rider Advisory Committee members. We're very excited. We're excited to have Pat on the Rider Advisory Committee representing the um, Accessibility Committee. And for all the work um, of our riders and advocates, it's so important um, that we hear their voice. And so thanks for coming out this morning, but always um, for those individuals that have really stepped up. So just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Helfer. Uh, so that concludes our Advisory Committee reports. Now we'll move on to the report by the Chair. I'm pleased to report that our Accessibility Advisory Committee recruitment was successful. The appointments being put forward today uh, will appoint five new members and reappoint one member. The ACC in total is comprised of 20 members. The individuals being put forward for appointment today represent diversity not only in age but in disability type, but also in different ways that they use uh, various metro services. Their wide range of experience will help the ACC represent and address the diverse concerns of senior citizens and individuals with disabilities who use metro in line with the ACC's mission. The ACC has uh, been a thoughtful and very effective advocate for Metro senior, uh, senior customers and customers with disabilities, and I know these members will help the ACC continue that mission. I'd like to thank Christian Blake and his team in the Department of uh, Access Services, along with current members of the ACC who provided input on these appointments. I'd like to move approval of the following appointments. To John Farmer from the District of Columbia with the term to expire June 20, uh, 2023. 
Philip Weintraub from the state of Maryland with the term to expire in June 2026. Timothy Howard from the Commonwealth of Virginia with the term to expire June 2025. Azir Atura and Sandra Nuzal uh, from the Commonwealth of Virginia with terms to expire in June 2026. And the reappointment of Rico Dancy as a member from the District of Columbia with the term to expire in June of 26. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Dr. Lowe. Uh, any comments or questions? So we have a motion and a second. Uh, Ms. Ellison, please call the roll. Thank you, Chair Smudberg. Aye. Vice Chair Babers. Aye. Mr. Zeffi. Aye. Ms. Klein. Aye. Mr. Letourneau. Aye. Dr. Lowe. Aye. Mr. Drummer. Aye. And Dr. Helfer. Mr. Chair, the motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ellison. So now, uh, congratulations to all those new ACC members, and I know that uh, and I know uh, Denise and Patrick and Philip and everyone will continue all the great work uh, that they do. And also, congratulations to Mr. Blake and his team because they really do interact very closely with this group and are extremely responsive and we we definitely appreciate that in fact uh mr off and i were on our way to a meeting on the hill yesterday and we were on waiting for a train to arrive and we met a woman on the platform who was originally part of the acc in its early inception so yeah yeah we just started chatting with her and yeah and she was part of the original acc so uh now where am i Okay, here we go. Uh, <laughs> so next, we have one appointment to the Riders Advisory Council. The board made appointments to the RAC last month, but one of the current members needed to step down because she's relocating out of the area. So to fill that vacancy, I'd like to move approval of the following appointment. Michael Leibowitz, representing the Commonwealth of Virginia with the term to expire in December 2022. Uh, Mr. Leibowitz will be uh, up for reappointment at the end of his term as our second. Seconded by Mr. Letourneau. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion or comment? All right. Ms. Ellison, please call the roll. Thank you, Chair Smedberg. Aye. Vice Chair Babers. Aye. Mr. Zappi. Aye. Ms. Klein. Aye. Mr. Letourneau. Aye. Dr. Lowe. Aye. Mr. Drummer. Aye. Dr. Helfer. Aye. Mr. Chair, the motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, as many of you have heard, or if you haven't, you must have had your uh, head in the ground. Uh, uh, the new uh, WMATA General Manager and Chief Executive Officer, Randy Clark, who will officially be starting uh, his role here at WMATA on July 25th. Uh, the board will swear him in um, on, uh, at its meeting on July 28th. Uh, uh, we look forward to uh, working with Randy and his, his leadership uh, in helping redefine Metro as it continues to integrate uh, and improve uh, and become part of this region's uh, success. In the meantime, kudos to Andy. Uh, and the team uh, for supporting the continuity of uh, continuation of operations during this really important transition time. And I know I see Teresa and Michael there and all the work you're doing on important projects and, and key roles. So thank you for your service and help through this transition as well. And now I'll turn the floor over to our interim uh, general manager, Andy Off, for his report. Oh, good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, um, and certainly the public. Uh, pretty awesome uh, to be in person today. I would like to start out, uh, you know, we had a moment of silence earlier today for Stephanie, and I wanted to personally congratulate um, Jennifer and her team, um, and John and Jose for putting together. This was, you know, a ton of work <laughs> that goes into this during a very difficult period. So thank you, Jen, uh, for everything you're doing. Um, I do want to start off this morning by uh, talking about a very important uh, announcement. As of uh, earlier this morning, uh, Metro has declared operational readiness uh, and control of the Silver Line extension. Uh, so that happened uh, earlier this morning. Uh, we're certainly excited about this big step. Uh, it means we're progressing and getting to the point of passenger service, uh, which we don't expect to happen uh, until later this fall. Uh, but what this means is we're now going to start mobilizing our employees uh, to uh, the Silver Line Phase 2 to begin the training and testing uh, necessary. Um, certainly exciting news, but we do have a lot ahead of us. Uh, just to give folks a sense of scale, um, you know, so Phase 1 was about 11 and a half mile extension. Uh, phase 2 is also about 11 and a half mile extension out to Ashburn. But what's really different here um, is the yard facility. It's about a 90 acre 
uh, facility with about 350 employees working there. So the amount of effort to get all those folks out there uh, and to become familiar with that equipment is certainly going to take, uh, you know, a considerable amount of time. So I'd like to congratulate, you know, Lynn, who's, you know, um, recently been working on that, and certainly Mr. Neil Knott, uh, who, if people don't know Neil, he's been working on the Silver Line program for almost 20 years now. Uh, so a huge milestone for him um, and super proud of the team. And we certainly look forward to updating the board, um, you know, next month as we continue our progress uh, in moving forward to uh, passenger service. Uh, in other news, we have received positive feedback uh, from riders uh, about the 7,000 series trains that have begun operation on the system. I got some feedback, um, you know, this morning from some members of the public uh, who had the opportunity to ride a 7,000 to the board meeting this morning. Um, after completing extensive training and testing, uh, last Thursday, you know, we, we did get those out there. Um, you know, at the moment, these trains are being used to fill service gaps and help address crowding, uh, specifically on the green and yellow lines. Once we are able to consistently <clears throat> and completely organize yard movements for daily inspections and get better at this process, uh, we do expect uh, to decrease frequency on the orange, blue, and silver line um, in July. Uh, meanwhile, we're actively working on the next phases of the return to service plan, which ultimately require approval uh, from the WMSC. Um, <clears throat> our did want to kind of conclude uh, to talk about our summer internship program. Uh, earlier this week, I had the opportunity to meet with our intern program that started uh, earlier this week. Uh, we have about 30 uh, interns in the program. Uh, we do have a great internship program. Uh, so, you know, just wanted to, you know, congratulate them and thank them, uh, you know, for giving public service, specifically transit, you know, a shot here. And we look forward to them, you know, at some point, hopefully becoming, you know, full-time employees. Um, and with that said, uh, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my remarks. Thank right. you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Roth, I just want to clear, could you further, uh, you know, maybe def uh, amplify some of what ORD means for us and what the next steps are in terms of bringing actual revenue service to? Yes, sir, absolutely. Uh, so operational readiness means that the infrastructure that the airport's authority was responsible for building uh, has now transferred to WMATA for control and custody. Uh, we have not accepted the project uh, technically, but we are now responsible for maintenance and security of the infrastructure. So because of that, we're now mobilizing our employees uh, to begin our preventive maintenance, familiarization training, and as I noted, specifically focused um, on the yard. So as we progress through that, uh, which ultimately ends with something we, re we refer to as pre-revenue service demonstration, where we're actually going to, you know, run past wheelie and simulate service for a number of weeks, um, you know, in that point, we'd be ready, uh, you know, for passenger service. But we do expect that to take, you know, certainly longer <laughs> than phase one, uh, simply because of, you know, the, the yard primarily. Uh, so as we, you know, progress and refine our schedule, we'll certainly be coming back, you know, in public session, you know, to inform the public on when we expect uh, passenger service to commence. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any, any questions for the general manager? Thank you. Uh, first of all, Andy, thank you so much for all the work that you've done, I know, right up until today uh, to get us to the point where we reached operational readiness. It is a, it is a major milestone, and we're, we're excited to get to this point, finally. Um, just a, a quick question on the 7000 series. So we had said that we were returning roughly eight eight-car trains to service. It looks like most days we're, we're running you know, four or five or so of those. Um, is that more due to you were you were kind of referencing logistical issues and in, in the in the rail yards in terms of like physically getting them inspected and getting them out? Do we have the capability of getting all out if we needed them from a service delivery standpoint? Um, can you just kind of get into that a little bit more? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Um, you know, this morning we had seven. Okay. Uh, so we are getting better. Um, the reason we haven't been able to achieve the eight, you know, on a consistent basis. Uh, has not been to the lack of us not performing the back-to-back -back inspections and those back-to-back -back inspections passing. Uh, they've been more related to other operational issues. Uh, as an example, every morning we do what's called a daily safety test, a DST on every train car, um, and two of them failed for other reasons other than, you know, back-to-back. -back. So we couldn't put those two trains uh, in service. As an example, one day we got out six. 
Uh, so we, we, we are getting better, <laughs> you know, at, at working through this, and we're, we're confident that, you know, in the days and weeks to come, uh, we're, we're going to be able to get eight out there on a consistent basis. Dr. Lowe. I mean, sorry, that's actually interesting. Can we follow up on that? Is that because the cars have been in storage for a long time and they're just, and there's, there's just issues with taking them out of the train museum and putting them back on the tracks? <laughs> uh, no, ma'am, we, we don't believe so. Um, you know, the, these things do happen, you know, on any given day. We do have a handful of cars for a variety of reasons uh, that may not pass their daily safety tests. Oh, so it's just the ones we happen to pick. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it wasn't uh, because, I mean, we have been moving them around a lot, you know, for training and in the yard. I mean, I think, um, you know, at, in total, uh, I think we have about 16 or 17 trains that are, seven Ks that are active today, uh, seven of which are for passenger service, the other that we're using for, you know, training and recertification, um, you know, and, and practicing, you know, the back-to-back, -back, um, you know, testing things. So it really hasn't been, um, you know, we don't think it has anything to do with them because they've been out of service okay. uh, for a period of time. Okay, and then I had a totally separate yeah. question, yes, which is that at the last board meeting, I asked what the status of the bus network redesign procurement was, and I have not heard back on that yet, and it's the next board meeting. So just putting a pin in that, I would love to hear what the status on that is before the next board meeting, if possible. Yes, ma'am. I do, I can tell you the, the it was awarded, and I, I owe you the details, but that did happen between the last board meeting and today. Uh, so I can share, Allison Davis has the details, and I can certainly share that in the terms of who the vendor was and when it was awarded. Um, and you know what our, what our progress is there. Huge that it's awarded. Yes, <laughs> that's, no, what, that's the information I was looking for. Let's set off a confetti cannon. Yep, <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah, no, thank you, ma'am. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Off. And I also want to recognize the work that the interim GM and our chief safety officer and many others have put in over the last several weeks. Not only during the transition phase, but also to get. To ORD today, and a lot of the challenges uh, that they faced, um, it was really a, a team effort in the truest sense. Uh, so really appreciate that. Also, acknowledging our general counsel Patricia Lee and the work that she's done uh, and her aspect of things uh, to get us to this point. Um, and I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Senators uh, Mark Warner and Tim Kaine uh, from Virginia, who were also very helpful. Uh, you know, toward the end here in the last uh, few months to get us to this point. So, exciting news. Uh, more to come, obviously, and uh, a ribbon cutting at some point. Uh, but uh, very, very exciting news. So yes, sir. Thank no, you, Andy. thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, now I'll turn the floor over to the chair of the elections committee, Mr. Letourneau, for his report. Mr. Letourneau. The following item was referred to the board at this morning's Elections Committee meeting, FY23 Board Officer Nominations. The committee voted to nominate, as you all heard, the committee voted to nominate Paul Smedberg as board chair, Lucinda Babers as first vice chair, and Jim Ports as board second vice chair. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of this slate of officers. Uh, thank you, Mr. Letourneau. Uh, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Dr. Lowe. Uh, the item has been moved and seconded. Uh, Ms. Ellison, please administer the vote. Thank you, Chair Smedberg. Aye. Vice Chair Babers. Aye. Mr. Zappi. Aye. Ms. Klein. Aye. Mr. Letourneau. Aye. Dr. Lowe. Aye. Mr. Drummer. Aye. Dr. Helfer. Aye. Mr. Chair, the motion passes. Thank you. Well, thank you very much to the committee, and thank you for your uh, confidence in me, and look forward to working with Lucinda and Secretary Ports and, 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 and everyone. I mean, we work very for a lot of you who may not know, we work extremely collaboratively and inclusively uh, in this board. It's not just the officers. So uh, I think the board has functioned, uh, you know, extremely well these last couple of years, and particularly this last year. And uh, I know I really appreciate that, and I know our funding jurisdictions really appreciate all the work that you put into it. So thank you. All right, next, reports by the jurisdictions, uh, NBTC, uh, Mr. Letourneau, any? Yeah, uh, for those that aren't aware, NBTC has a statutory requirement to report on financial condition of Metro as well as strategies to reduce costs. 
Uh, it's an annual report required by the General Assembly. Um, and so MBTC is statutorily the, the organization that puts that report together. So we have begun through the MBTC Metro Committee uh, working on that report. Uh, obviously a very interesting time for us over the past year with COVID um, and, and looming issues that we know about regarding our fiscal situation. So we'll, we will reflect all that. Um, but the, uh, the committee met a few weeks ago where we started talking about all this. Um, there were the expected questions about timing of our financial situation. I did tell the committee that I expected, um, you know, the, the board is, is starting our work, uh, understanding better what our revenue situation is, and we'll likely have a lot more to say about it by the end of the summer, um, which I think everybody's waiting for in terms of the jurisdictions, um, as well as other questions about some of the issues that we heard from one of the speakers this morning, fair evasion, crime, those sorts of things. And certainly we're all attuned to those and working on those. But uh, so that report work will continue throughout the summer. Okay. District of Columbia, Deputy Mayor Baker. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So DC Mayor um, Bowser has put together what we call the DC Build Back Better Infrastructure Task Force. And that task force has been tasked to look at where we want to spend any bipartisan infrastructure um, funds that we can either get through discretionary manner or through competition. And so we're meeting, several subcommittees have gotten together, we're meeting, there is a transportation subcommittee that is um, looking at how we can better connect the city in terms of transit, and that includes Metro in terms of how to get to Metro and how to get to where you're trying to get to after um, you get off of Metro. And so we welcome public comments. The public can give comments at infrastructure.dc.gov. And so we welcome you all, the public, the board members, to give any um, comments for the subcommittee. Um, but act quickly, it's probably about another week of comments. So, Tracy? Nothing for me. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, WSTC, Mr. Zappi. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, I don't have anything to report unless Mr. Drummer has something. Uh, nothing to add. Okay, thank, thank you. you. And the federal government, Ms. Klein. Thank you. Um, so I'll just say that the Federal Transit Administration is continuing to work on implementation of the bipartisan infrastructure law. Uh, a lot of the initial competitive grant programs have been put out and applications have been received. So hopefully in the next couple of months we'll hear hopefully favorably on some of those applications. Um, in addition, they're looking at some of the other types of requirements and regulations that came as part of that bill. Uh, for example, the requirement that, a, that all transit agencies over a certain size have to develop an, a management and employee safety committee. Um, so there's a number of different elements of that law that are still being rolled out and uh, we're continuing to look at that at the same time. The appropriations process uh, in Congress for this coming fiscal year has kicked off. Today, I think, there was a hearing in the House on transportation funding for fiscal year 23. Uh, so that all is, is positive as well. Um, so there's still movement at the, at the federal level. I'll and, turn to Dr. Helfer. And I just want to add one other note. Um, congratulations to the Washington um, Council on Governments uh, for receiving money for, from the Interagency Coordinating Council on Access and Mobility on human service transportation coordination. Um, as we all know, there's a requirement for a human service coordinated transportation plan so that integrates and coordinates access for all, uh, especially people with disabilities, older adults, and people with lower incomes. And so, um, and in addition, uh, the state of Virginia received some money. So I'm hoping that benefits all of our region. So thank you. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, with no further business to come before the board, we will stand adjourned and I'll move uh, to executive session in accordance with the bylaws. I, Paul Smedberg, request that the Board of Directors convene an executive session to discuss the following matters pursuant to Article 2, Paragraph 9, Subsection C, budgetary matters that may affect legal positions, will not contracts or sensitive relationships with local jurisdictions or the federal government, and F, safety or security matters where premature release would compromise public safety as their second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Letourneau. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, and thank you everyone for being here for our first in-person meeting in two years.